Hello, my name is Rick. Welcome to my channel. Uh, in today's guitar lesson, I thought I would show you um, kind of a connection or something just to think about with a major triad and a major pentatonic scale. Um, I wasn't, didn't even know I was going to do this video until I guess today, maybe yesterday, last night, thought of it. Um, because I had a student working on something uh, that, that has to do with this and it really clicked for him, really helped him a lot, I guess. So um, I thought I'd talk about it. Um, if it helps know a little bit of backstory, um, this person uh, had played chords and kind of folk stuff mostly for years and never really did any improvising. And um, yeah, just a few things I showed him, major pentatonic scales, some licks, just some kind of basic stuff helped him a lot. But uh, he really liked this idea of the, the triad connection, if you want to call it. Um, so let's just quick jump into, let's say, let's say we're just playing over a, you know, whatever, kind of a G, it could be a, you know, that sounds kind of country, which I don't usually play too much of, but, um, but yeah, just a, anything, just like rock ballad, whatever. Um, so let's just do a G major pentatonic scale. We'll start here on the fifth fret of the D string. You could do a whole, you know, longer, bigger one and different ones, but I'm just going to purposely do this one right here. Um, so hopefully you already know this because then that'll help with the theory. Jumping right into pentatonic scales mixed with triads, if you haven't done either or, might be a little bit confusing, but I'll, I'll try to go slow, but maybe not too slow. I don't know. <laughs> so basically if you do that, you have G, A, B, D, E. G again. Um, so you have five different notes. That's it. Uh, you don't really need to count this last one, the G. That's an octave, right, of the, of the first one. Um, so right away, even with that, if you're just playing over a, you know, a G chord, let's say for now, just keep things really simple. Yeah, you can just improvise with that, you know. So you might already know that. That's just pretty pretty basic there. Um, so now the thing to take a look at that I think is maybe a little more interesting is what is a G chord? You know, what's the notes in it? Well, it's G, B, D. That's a G major triad. So if, and we could, yeah, I'm not gonna go into, <laughs> well, the quick, the quick explanation there is it's the first, third, and fifth notes of a major scale. So if you do the G major scale, Skip two, three, skip four, five, G major triad. But again, I think this video is gonna be hopefully for somebody that's already a little more acquainted with that, and they just haven't thought of this this connection right here. So, so if you go back to keep in mind the G B D, if you go back to the G major pentatonic scale here, I'll just do the first, you know, the five notes. Um, so again, G. Out of, the, out of the G major pentatonic scale is the is the one of the triad, right? So G, B, D, G. A is not, <laughs> we'll say. The next note, the third note of the G major pentatonic scale, the B, is, that's the major third of G. So, so far this note is in the major pentatonic scale and the triad. The second note is in the major pentatonic scale but not in the triad. The next note, the B, is in, we'll say both, major pentatonic scale and the triad. Then you have a D here, sure enough, G, B, and D. The D is in both, <laughs> G major pentatonic scale and the triad. And then the E is in the major pentatonic scale, but not in the triad. So the whole idea being is that three-fifths of the G major pentatonic scale um, is the triad of a G major chord in this case. You can change the key later and all that kind of stuff, but yeah, just keep it like that for now. Um, so the A note and the E note are in the G major pentatonic scale, but not in the triad. A funny way of looking at this um, is if you play a G chord here, right, you get the G major triad. And again, it doesn't matter where you play the, the triad later on. Um, a and E, oddly enough, and a power chord 
<laughs> is the two notes that are uh, in the G major pentatonic scale, but not in the triad. That's actually kind of funny that I don't think I even thought about that till recently. It's so it's like you could have some fun with that, just even thinking of oh, interesting triad. You know, two notes that are not. That's I don't know. That's something I'll probably explore later, just for myself. Um, dumb little you know guitar games here. Um, so the relevance, if you've uh, stayed around long enough to watch this video, is that let's say you're playing over this G chord. I'll try to do it how I was illustrating it to my students. Uh, let's see how to do that. Um, I think it was, yeah, doing this. So I had a teacher in California, uh, Nick Nolan, my private teacher, he used to always do this, and it was kind of a, a quick uh, way that makes sense to hear the harmony, the chord in the background, and then hear some of the, uh, the melody notes and how it pertains. So if I go like this, hopefully you can hear that, um, that's the triad. So I'll pick it sometimes. That's the, that's the triad. So now where it gets interesting, so the triad, I should uh, explain this, um, one of the concepts of improvising you can look at over the hopefully many years of improvising that you do is, well, if you're playing over a G major chord and it consists of G, B, D, well, then that's going to be the most, you know, um, consonant sounding notes, the most, what's the word? I don't, I don't, it's like the most relaxed, pleasing, uh, um, safe, I guess safe is a good word to use sometimes. <laughs> the, all these words will imply, you know, positive and negative connotations to different people, so I hesitate to do this, but it's just like you can't go wrong as far as representing the sound of the chord, right? Like if you're playing a G chord and you hit the notes that are in a G chord, you can't really do anything wrong, right? Now, this is where it's going to get more interesting. If you hit, if you go from this G to the A note, so I think it still sounds good, it still sounds cool, but you can see there's some tension going on there. And usually to most of those ears, it sounds like it wants to go somewhere else, it doesn't want it to just stay there. See, so you like that? See how it kind of it resolved there, it went from the A back to the G, G being one of the notes in the, in the chord. You could also go uh, A up to B because B is one of the notes of the triad. And see how that resolves again. So I'll kind of visualize that. G, A, B, G, and B are two of the notes of the triad. A is not. And then you can look at the other note. So if you go like this. Um, so E is the other note that's in the G major pentatonic scale but not in the triad. And it's also just a good like kind of ear training thing just to hear all these notes and even just decide for yourself what does it sound like to you. Again, it's just all personal preference at the end of the day. I think it sounds cool, but it, I also feel like it wants to go somewhere. See there, I went to a D note and that's G, B, D, that's the fifth, one, three, five. Um, so, it's just, yeah, it's kind of a cool thing to think of because then what you can think of it as when you're soloing more naturally, you know. You'll know that you can uh, land pretty safely again. I'll just use that word for now. <laughs> other two notes, the A and the D, see, probably wants to, sorry, a hard to do this here, but, see there I went from an A, sorry, A up to B, and again it resolved, because it's one of the notes of the, of the chord, so, um, yeah, so I think this could be really useful for, um, yeah, there's a bunch of things I could keep talking about probably here. Um, I think it's one of the reasons, well, yeah, for sure, it's one of the reasons why 
pentatonic scales sound so good in general. And I think especially when you're first starting out, if you're just getting into improvising, it's a great way to get into improvising because um, you think about it, if you just play, let's say in this case, over a, a G chord, um, you play G major pentatonic, you really can't go wrong. I mean, you're gonna be hitting, uh, again, safe, correct, whatever you wanna call it. You're gonna be hitting those notes three-fifths of the time, you know, <laughs> assuming you hit all the notes somewhat equal, you know, amounts or durations, you know. Um, if you want one maybe like kind of practical exercise, then just, I would say, just, you know, uh, being aware of this and, and trying to use it, just put on a backing track of G. You might even want to just record a, a, just a G chord. I think that'd be helpful in this case. If you put on a backing track that has like G and D and C and that kind of stuff, this is not gonna apply to, like if it comes up, an A minor chord comes up or a D, all, this is all gonna change. So I would just do like a. Just record a, a G chord. Um, and then what you can do is when you go to solo, let's say that's going on in the background, you can just kind of kind of imagine in your head. I wish I had a looper here, but being lazy and not not having one here. Um, so you got this in the background, right? Um, <laughs> what you can do is um, land on the G. You know, So there what I did twice was I, I went up to the A note and then I went back to the G note. I heard the tension and then I went back to the G note. Um, so I'll do it again just so you can kind of get an idea because I'm trying to keep this somewhat simple. Yeah, this, uh, <laughs> so um, here's a G. A, G. So if you hear that little tension there. sense um, I think if you look at it these are the kind of things too I think at least for me um, yeah I'd say most is a good word to use probably most of the learning I've done that was really it sounds funny to say because we're you know living in this world of billions of YouTube guitar videos um, but I think most of the stuff that really clicked in my head the most was when I had to think for myself um, so a guitar teacher would tell me something, or a book would tell me something, um, or back, I'm old enough, the VHS Paul Gilbert video would tell me something or whatever. And then, yeah, then it was just like months, weeks and months and of, of thinking about it, trying stuff, not sure, eh, try this again, maybe ask my teacher another question. But yeah, so I think this is a thing where I think hopefully this is enough information um, that you can, you, you'll, I think the rest of it you'll uh, really fully understand it if you, you know, do it, experience it. You know, um, if you were to just turn this video off and not try it, um, it won't won't do much good. <laughs> so, so yeah, hope that helps a little bit, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks.